Hi, everybody. They should talk to me. I hope I have the volume fixed. Um, there are a number of things that I wanted to discuss in my posts lately, my blogs. I wanted to discuss something earlier um, about communication and how people tend to misconstrue others' um, reactions and so forth even though they themselves have many of the same responses. Another thing that I wanted to discuss was marriage. Um, I should probably make both of those separate, so you can listen to each of them. So I'm going to write down the second thing. And discuss the first one. I want to discuss communication. Society, uh, for whatever reason, has conditioned us to believe that certain mannerisms, certain phrases, um, certain dress codes, certain beliefs, certain forms of expression that is, they have taught us to believe that these certain things mean something and that they can't mean anything else. For example, Laughter. It is highly associated with humor and joy and so forth. But that's not always the case. Many of the times we laugh, and we don't laugh because we're happy. We laugh because we're frustrated. We laugh because we're angry. We laugh because we're sad or just laughing it off. Many times we laugh, and, it, and we are not in a good mood. And it is not a positive sign. We'll cry. The crying isn't necessarily associated with sorrow. We are taught that it is. You can cry because you are happy. And the contrast between the terrible things and the good things. And that is why we cry. We sorrow and express or express tears for a multitude of different reasons. Not because it's always sadness, but because of the contrast. We can cry over happy events, we cry over sorrowing events, we cry because we're in pain. We cry for many different reasons, we laugh for many different reasons, we smile for many different reasons. It's even possible to smile evilly. People are aware of this fact. A smile does not necessarily mean that somebody's doing all right and that they're in a good mood. It, many times people smile out of social norm to, as a form of greeting, as a form of acknowledgement, as um, custom, um, out of habit, as a way of hiding that anything is wrong. Uh, one cannot simply declare a certain expression to be purely and um, consistently a singular to have a singular reason for it a singular expression These can, there can be many many different expressions so it's important to understand this when you're communicating with others Many folks will get upset if you suddenly laugh. Um, they might see it as an insult that you are laughing at them, that you are finding pleasure or humor in uh, what is going on. Perhaps you laughed because you're just as frustrated as they are. And it was a reflex. It was because you were actually laughing at them at all. Maybe you're trying to communicate with them. And you, uh, they said or did something and you felt so frustrated, you just reflexively laughed. And they took it as an insult, but you did not mean it as an insult. Um, it's important to consider that you're not always going to understand what it means when somebody responds a certain way. And other times you're going to understand that their responses are just as complex as your own. You need to understand yourself to be able to understand 
others. You can't just expect everyone to be a certain way, do things a certain way, etc. But you can see that they are more complex. Um, at times, for example, perhaps you get frustrated that somebody you know didn't tell you that something is wrong, or that they needed something. You get angry, and you get upset, and you ask them, oh, well, why didn't you say anything? Um, well, think about a time when you didn't say anything, when you did not ask for help. I'm certain you can think of a time when this has occurred. We don't always say what we need to say. We don't always communicate when we need to communicate. We don't always do it in the way that we should, even if we do try to communicate in some form. It is important to understand that others are just as complex as you are, and they're not always going to respond in the way that you expect them to. You might think that they're going to lash out at you, but they may be understanding because they can relate. Um, you might assume that somebody you know and have known for years will respond negatively to finding out something about you that perhaps you only recently found out about yourself. And because you are afraid of their response, you don't tell them. Assuming that they are going to react in a way that you don't want them to. And the truth is, there's a very good chance they will be understanding. Maybe not at first, but if you give them the time, if you work with them, if you try to help them to understand, to relate, they will probably be able to. I'm not saying you won't ever meet somebody who can't seem to deal with whatever it is you're telling them, who don't believe it, who disrespect you or disregard you in some way. Those, there are such people like that. And I know it is hard to communicate with them. But it doesn't mean that you will never be able to communicate with them. They might be unreasonable on one subject. They might be reasonable on other subjects. They might be a very genuine, decent person in regards to communicating most of the time. And sometimes with some things, they're not. You need to respect the human complexity when communicating with others. You need to understand that you are complex, that your feelings, your actions, your desires, your interests, and theirs are far more complex than you may have previously thought of. You may do things that you don't notice. Subtle gestures that you repeat, perhaps they're not even so subtle. Perhaps, perhaps you organize things in a certain way to comfort yourself, to make sure you don't lose anything. Perhaps you do, perhaps you lock all your doors and windows and, uh, what you kind of should anyway. Um, Perhaps you have certain mannerisms because somebody wronged you. Perhaps you do certain things because those things, you're trying to prevent something bad from happening because of experiences that you have had or because um, contemplations. I don't know. There are many different behaviors that we develop. Subtle things that we do reflexively. I, for example, have to organize my dishes. Um, I do this not because of some traumatic experience. I clean my dishes after every use, and I reuse them because I feel this is more efficient. I use the same dishes over and again, the same spoon for months at a time, and why not? It's clean. I use it, I clean it, I have it available to me every time. This annoys some people that I know who live with me, who believe that you should use the dishes once, Put them 
into the dishwasher and after it's filled up enough, run it. I cannot agree with these individuals because then we run out of spoons and I have to look at one and I end up having to wash it anyway and then I have to wash a bunch of other dishes or perhaps the thing the dishwashing machine is full enough to run there's almost nothing in there most of it is silverware because of certain dishes that have been used um, that's a matter of personal perspective but it can be the same way with communication it can be the same way with subterranean for example many might say that I have shifty eyes and therefore I'm not trustworthy if you had any idea how hard it was to stare at a bright blue light a tiny little camera the words web camera and this little speaker over here next to it and to try and remain close enough to the camera and the audio that picks up my voice clearly despite occasional blips in the recording and despite annunciation issues then you would understand why I continually move my eyes to my image to the blue light to the camera and to the speaker constantly oh and then there I've got that lamp over there but this is a mannered and I have seen many YouTubers bring up such a mannerism. Oh, they have shifty eyes, they're not trustworthy, they're lying, or so forth and so on. There are many things you might not be considering about why they're reacting that way. It might be history, it might be something going on at that time, perhaps my eyes have something wrong with them, and that's causing a problem, perhaps. Um, or perhaps I have a, a mental disorder and I can't focus or which I actually kind of do but that's another story um, it could be a multitude of things but when you're talking to others you need to be willing to listen just as you expect them to listen you have to be willing to listen to them and as you expect them to think about what you are saying, to consider it more deeply, you have to think as well. You have to contemplate what they are saying. You want to see, you want them to see things from your perspective? Stop and see things from their perspective. Communication is about sharing. It's not all about you, because if it was all about you, two individuals thinking that it's all about them are never going to get any successful communication done. You have to be willing to work together. You have to be willing to consider, reconsider, contemplate. Perhaps you won't resolve it in a single moment. Perhaps you need to come back. Perhaps you won't resolve it at all and you just need to give up on whatever the argument is. Perhaps they see what you're doing as an attack. I spent a lot of time with my mother for the last two days. I love her. But we tend to have lots of contention between us. She was coloring a picture with markers and she asked for my honest opinion. The first image picture that we did together turned out very nice. I helped pick the colors. I explained coloring to her and she she had been troubled for some time as to why her images did not appear to look as good as they did when she was coloring at a um, hair center which is where she started coloring it is a recent hobby she picked up that she's never used before she has a knack for colors a raw natural awesome talent and she was wondering why her images hadn't appeared quite so lovely lately. Um, defensively, she blamed the markers. But she still has quite a few markers. She might not have a million different colors. I just... But she still has quite a number of... A lot of markers. She has at least the basic colors. 
Red is always the color that gets used up quickly. Green and brown tend to follow soon after. So does blue. Um, you might end up stuck with a lot of colors that don't get used very much. And yeah, that happens. Um, red especially disappears fast. Um, in my experience, just does. Um, and so she complains she's running out of colors. But we worked together and, we, and she produced, um, we both came to conclusions we'd never done before. We combined colors we'd never combined before and came up with an image that was unlike any plans we originally intended. And it was fun. We worked together on it and the image looks really, really cool. Um, I, I would, I would love to show it to you. Um, it's, I think it's, I think it's in a box right over there. It might be fun to show you. I don't know if it'll show up very well on um, on this camera. I'm gonna get it. <laughs> and I don't know. I wonder if you hear me talking about. Okay, so I have my mother's awesome looking picture. It's a, yeah. um, it's a velvet. So, the image my mother was troubled about is this one. And she was troubled about this one because she used a lot of dark colors. The um, the dragon is a dark red with dark green and dark gray, and the background has um, dark blue and purple. The stars are bright yellow, and the planet is a dark green and dark purple. So she was wondering why it didn't look as good in her mind as she had really perceived it. And then the rainbow. She also um, accidentally or deliberately colored it gray. I didn't even notice that previously. I guess she got confused. Because sometimes in these pictures, it's extremely difficult to tell. Um, what belongs to what piece and um, so we communicated typically we don't talk we don't do anything together she's we tend to have lots of hostility um, and I'm not going to blame that all on her uh, I'm not very good at reaching out to her. I hope that didn't just cut. I'm not very good at reaching out to my mother. I try to communicate, and I'm not saying I'm perfect at communicating. Communication has to go both ways. It is a process of development. It takes your whole life to learn. You work at it. You improve. You can always improve at communicating. And so we talked about it. We talked about the next image. And I'll talk about it before I show you. She had done the lettering. There are some letters, bubble letters, and she filled them in. And she used certain colors. And, um, she wanted to my honest opinion on what to do with the colors. And um 
<laughs> it really looks so cool. Um, so she had only done a letter by that point. And she was already beginning to worry and wonder, oh, it, it's not looking as good as I want it to. And she was thinking she didn't have enough colors. And she likes markers, so that's a good medium for her. Um, I like oils, pencil oils. Uh, smooth, dirty, durable, but rich and full. I love those kinds of things. And she likes um, something that she can fill in. So, uh, you can't see it. But, um, so she asked my opinion. And at first, she took it as a bit of an attack. She wanted my opinion, and yet she got upset when I mentioned things. And that's normal. People don't want criticism. Even when they actually want criticism, even when they actually want advice, they, um, they will still get upset. And that's not because they don't appreciate what you're saying. It's because they are worried that you don't care, um, or that you, that you hate what they're doing. They feel the need to defend themselves. Um, I think she she actually um and no picture is perfect. No picture is perfect. Um, you can be the best artist in all the world, and you'll you will always, or somebody else will always find some tiny little thing that's still wrong with the image. That's part of being human, and that's okay. For example, this there's a little itty bitty part of the cat's one of the cat's tails that has been painted the that has been markered the same color as the fence. Um, and it probably should have been something like that. Like orange or something. Probably red. That would have been awesome. And um, so we argued. Yeah. Uh, she wanted to use certain colors, and uh, there's a star that is blue, a dark, dark blue. There's another that's a dark, dark purple. There's one that is. Where she, I think, tried to put down blue and then put red over it to maybe make purple. It can be hard to blend markers. Um, there are oil markers. There are water-based markers. There are different kinds of markers. So when you get into art, consider what you're buying and what it does. Research it before you buy it. Then buy a tiny sample. I wish they had whole sample sets, but buy a tiny sample so you can learn what learn more about it. But research it first so you can understand it before you even buy anything. Communication requires research. Uh, you need to understand what you're actually talking about and what they are actually talking about. You need to be able to relate to them. And that's not just some um, thing you do for school. That's something you do for life. You learn, you improve, you communicate, you study, and this is the image that her and I managed to produce together. I rarely ever work with others. I've been doing art my whole life, and uh, my mother always said she never had a talent for art. And she managed to overcome that belief and find that she did. So,
this is the image. Yes, I wasn't talking. Don't don't think that the uh, mic cut out. Uh, this is the image. Um, and I actually have a fan on right now for air circulation. Uh, it's actually brighter um, and more vibrant in real life. My camera can't capture that. My simple Vicky laptop camera from 2009. Um, we communicated. We did something that we really have kind of never done. Uh, we worked on an art project together. This is probably, yeah, this is the very first time we worked together on an art project and it was so natural um, and reflexive that we didn't even really think about it as some major feat. We treated it like it was normal, and so we, we worked at it, and we, um, we managed to get an entire image done, and it looks really, really awesome. I love it. Um, and it's, and it's, uh, it's one of the black velvet things, that's why it's mostly black. Um, and that's cool. Uh, and we did that today as well, but sometimes people see things as an attack. They don't like criticism. But just because you don't like criticism, it doesn't mean you don't appreciate criticism. Now, I've heard people give that argument, the argument that no one likes criticism. And I say, nobody wants criticism, nobody likes criticism. They don't want to hear that they've done a bad job. They don't want to be called names and uh, ridiculed and humiliated. Well, that isn't criticism. That's somebody being a jerk. That's somebody being mean and cruel. That's not criticism. Criticism is constructive. Criticism teaches you things. Criticism helps you to improve. It helps you to see what you've done wrong and what you can do right. It helps you to understand things. That is what criticism is. It betters you. It might hurt. You might get your, you might feel bad that you've done something that you don't feel is good enough. But you are the one who's hurting yourself. You are seeing an honest, compassionate attempt to help you as an attack. You're no everyone says that you're your own worst critic. Which is true. You are. You go throughout the day, you wonder, oh, well, what do they think about how I'm dressed? What do they think about my list? I have lists. Fine. I have a list. I have a permanent list. And, um, you're always going to be your worst critic. If there's anybody who's more of a critic than you, then you need to either consider whether they are genuinely just cruel and lying or if you're actually doing something so terribly wrong in which case there's going to be more than one person who's criticizing you hopefully that you need to change what you're doing um, You shouldn't, um, you shouldn't allow what others to say, what others say to put you down. You shouldn't take somebody saying you could have done better as an insult. That's a compliment. You can do better. I know you can. You always can. And I mean that. And that's the truth. Everyone can always do better. What you're doing right now is probably pretty awesome. But I know you can do better. And that's not an insult. That's not cruel. I'm not being mean. I'm letting you know you made a little mistake. I'm letting you know 
we all mess up. Got a little confused. Hmm, the cat's tail has grip. It's blue, so that's okay. I don't really notice it. Unless you look really closely. And this picture is still one of the best I've ever seen her color. And they're all really, really awesome. It's nice to see my mother has artistic talent and that I got that from her. Uh, it's really nice. Really good. And there's the one we worked on today. I'll be right back. And just right over there. Now, this is the one that we worked on today. And yes, I'm using examples. I'm using examples so you can understand. It, it helps to have examples of what it does. Whether you say them, show them, or whatever. Now, before t showing you this image, which is completed, I'm going to tell you about it. My mom came to me, and she had already done one thing. She had made the mice gray. There is nothing wrong with the color gray. The shade of gray, the lid to the marker, was a bright gray. And the mice ended up dark gray. Because when you fill in marker colors, you tend to go over the same area repeatedly, which causes it to darken. That's something about markers. Uh, in some cases, that does, depending on what kind of marker you use, I imagine maybe oil markers might not be so frustrating. A way to make marker colors lighter is to shade an, shade an area with one swipe, Shade next to that area with a second swipe, but don't go over the same area. Slowly fill it in one swipe at a time, gently. That can make it lighter. Now, I told my mom this, but she had already um, made the mice a really dark gray. So there were there are two options. Either make, when you make something too dark, Either make the things around it even darker, which would cause it to appear lighter, or if it is so dark, make the things brighter and add dark emphasize, emphasizing details for um, the sake of understanding and make the, the dark appear more deliberate and flattering. So she made them dark red in a forest scene. There's flowers and grass and, and mushrooms. And the easiest thing to do would be to surround them with brighter colors, which will cause them to pop out a bit. Um, there's already a certain amount of black colors that are um, there, so one has to work with the fact the background is already fully black, except for the parts that you can color. Okay, so she got upset. It's natural. You're not going to communicate perfectly every time. You could be the best communicator in the world. You could be paid a fortune to communicate, to talk, and you will still mess up. That's just how it is. You're not going to come off to everyone perfectly every time. Don't expect it. Don't expect to never again have misperceptions. Don't expect to never frustrate anybody or get frustrated by anyone. Don't expect that just because you are doing your best to be good at communicating that you won't mess up. The greatest artist in the world, the greatest everything in the world, messes up. 
There isn't a human in all the world who has not messed up. Even at what they are best at. It happens. A lot. And it's normal. Accept that in yourself. And accept that in others. And try to help others to accept it in their selves as well. So, I tried giving her some advice and through some arguing and trying to calm down. Sometimes you have to check your voice. You might be raising your voice. You might be using harsh words. You might be speaking too quickly. You might be making rash gestures. You might be just moving your arms. You're not making vulgar vulgar gestures, but you're making quick, irritated ones. You are displaying, deliberately or not, mostly not, that you are not in the best mood. You need to understand yourself and what you're doing, pay attention, and sometimes you, you need to check yourself. A phrase often used today is, check yourself before you wreck yourself. Well, that's a good motto to go by. You do need to consider what you're doing and how it affects others and how you want to work with or affect them. So, this is the image. Now, there is another thing that we argued about. I had advised that she make the mushroom's top a deeper color um, and then she could use other colors and so forth. For emphasis. Uh, and that might help because it would tie in the fact that everything else is going to end up being too bright. To emphasize the mouse, the mice. And so it would, it would tie in that there would still be at least some dark colors in the picture. Because to make the dark mice stand out, she would have to use bright colors. And that would be a way of incorporating some other dark colors in large structures. That's the, the when you're working with um, larger structures and a dark background, the larger structures can be deeper and darker, but smaller things don't, don't stand out. You have to be careful. And choose wisely. If the most majority of what you're doing is bright, the details will be dark. If the majority of what you're doing is dark, the details will be light. Typically, there are um, exceptions. So, this is Another image that we worked on. And it's awesome. It looks, it looks really awesome. We did things that aren't typically done. Um, these stones are red, as you can see. They're, they're a deep red. The, um, the mice are of course, dark gray, and uh, the mushroom is a uh, has dark purple, and uh, it looks like orange, the baby, but it's a light pink, which is actually rather flattering. If it were orange, it would actually be um, a bit more uh, popping out or something. I don't know. Uh, you can debate me all you want. It's a bright pink. It actually is. Um, and they're lovely. It, it, it's a very, very cute, lovely image, and she did it very, very well. Um, so we argued. It happens to me, I, I, and I'm trying to help you to figure out how to communicate. If it happens to me, it'll happen to you. There's always going to be problems with communication, and I have no idea how long this video has gone on. I am so sorry if it's gone on too long. I guess I rambled. But the point is, consider what you're doing. Learn to understand and recognize what you do reflexively. And why 
You get it. If you suddenly laugh, why? Think about it. Think about what you're doing and why it happened. And the more you understand yourself, the better you will be able to work with others. And then give them the benefit of the doubt. See your mannerisms, see your characteristics in them. My mother, I said, I said in a previous video, she laughed. She'll laugh over things that are horrifying. Now I thought about that. I once laughed because I was really frustrated trying to communicate with her. I was laughing at her. I was laughing because I was trying to communicate and I couldn't seem to get my point across. I couldn't seem to get things uh, worked out and uh, damage had already been done. And so I laughed in pained frustration. My mom laughs because she's trying to change the mood from a negative one to a positive one. She does it as a form of acknowledgement. She does it as a response when she can't say anything else. And you know what? If you might think it's weird. But what is the one response on the internet that tends to be the default if you have nothing to say? L O L. Laugh out loud. Laughter can be a form of communication, a form of acknowledgement when you can't say anything else. That's why we say terms such as um, uh, uh, it's a filler. The laughter is a filler to potentially change the mood to something positive. It is a relatively pleasant response if appropriately done, and it is a response. It acknowledges the individual, it acknowledges the circumstance, it shows you're listening, it's considered to be pleasant. Laughter is considered to be pleasant, just like I mentioned at the beginning of the video. So one might inadvertently use it in bad situations. You need to realize what is appropriate and what you're effectively communicating, not simply what you're trying to communicate. It sounds reasonable, but reconsider it. Perhaps you don't have to say anything. Just nod. She could, she could nod. She could give eye contact, but she tends to listen better when she's not making eye contact. You shouldn't automatically expect somebody to make eye contact because you were raped and told you need to make eye contact. I'm not doing that hardly throughout this video. I have made almost no eye contact. I, I, I can't hardly manage it. And yet, I'm still saying something significant. I'm still paying attention. And while it is difficult to maintain a subject and to express a subject to make a certain point, I am still trying. And that means something. So, learn yourself. Rethink what you're doing, moment to moment, and after the effect. People try to think beforehand what they're going to say. Don't. It never turns out in the moment what you plan for. You don't just practice in the mirror and it turns out the way you want it to. Never. Watch Gabriel Iglesias video. Um, I don't remember what it was called. Sorry, that hurt the mic. Um, look up Gabriel Iglesias. He is Iglesias than I, uh, or Fluffy. He's known as Fluffy. He's a comedian and he made a movie. And, uh, he gave permission to pirate it. He gave permission. He is the author. He had that right. You can acquire it and watch it for free. Or you can buy it for, what, um, five, ten dollars from Amazon? Prime or something? You can watch it on Amazon. 
uh, with a simple little account and then you want to tons of other stuff for free instead of actually purchasing a hard copy, which have the price. So, and, and it's worth buying and watching repeatedly. But, so look that up. And learn a little, uh, learn a little about how delightfully messed up we all are. And, uh, this has been way longer. I think I've been talking for about an hour. I am so sorry. And yet I'm not because I hope this message has helped someone. And maybe in future videos I will be able to summarize it. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> bye. And talk to me.